Okay, so in this video, I wanted to show how to create smart contracts to start deploying your NFTs and have them all integrated with OpenSea in every single NFT marketplace. This is going to be all done through Mintables. And if you don't know how to use Mintables to create an NFT project, I'll link a previous video that I made that shows how to do that. So I'm going to skip all that right now and just show you what to do once you've actually uploaded all your assets. So here you can see this is the Dino Bros project that we were working on from the previous video. I have all my layers set up and now I am ready to start distributing these. So there's kind of two things you could do once you get here, once you're all done creating your assets. And let me actually, I'll show you what this project looks like, but these, these are kind of some randomly generated NFTs from, from the layers that I've uploaded here. This is what most people have been doing. They come here, they click generated Im generate images and I could generate, let me just generate a hundred images real quick for this video. So, you know, you generate your images and then you could download them. And what Mintables gives you are the images and the metadata files. This is something that you would take. And if you know how to deploy a smart contract, then you can upload these to IPFS and then deploy a smart contract for it. But a lot of people, I think, don't know how to deploy smart contracts because it's a little bit technical. And so... Most people are just trying to upload them up to OpenSea. The, the problem with uploading it to OpenSea is that most of the popular projects are not uploaded to OpenSea the way you think they are. So I'm going to come over here. I'll, let's take a look at Doodles. So this is one of the more popular, if not, it's one of the most popular NFT collections. And if I take a look at one of these NFTs, if I open up the details, I can see that there's a contract address. And if I click on this, you can see that this is a smart contract that's on Ethereum that was created for the Doodles project. So when you upload something, when you just upload it to OpenSea, that's not what happens. Okay, so I'll show you what happens. But right now you can see everything in here. This is a smart contract specifically for uh, Doodles. If I were to just go on OpenSea, and I already kind of started here, but let me just actually take what we created just now. If I just kind of upload this image, and I'll call this my test dino. And I create this. I am not a robot. Okay, so I created one NFT here. First of all, you can see that there, there is no bulk uploader. So for me to upload, let's say 10,000, it would take way too long. Second of all though, if I were to do the same thing I just did with Doodles, I open up the details and I take a look at the contract address. You'll see that this is not my contract. This is the OpenSea's shared contract. So you're kind of sharing this one contract with everybody else who's uploading uh, their NFTs to OpenSea. So this is kind of weird because if you look at the NFTs under this contract, uh, there is way more than what I've just put here. And the reason they do that is because it costs a bit of money to create a new smart contract. For Ethereum, it costs thousands of dollars to create a new smart contract. For Polygon, it's, it's much, much cheaper. And I'll, I'll go into that a bit later. But this is why most of the really popular NFTs that are out there uh, are not uploaded directly to OpenSea like that. It's because they don't actually kind of own their own space on the blockchain. Okay, so now let me go back to Mintables and kind of explain how all this works. So what I need to actually do is I need to create a minting page. For, for, let's take a look at Doodles as an example, okay? You buy Doodles on OpenSea, but OpenSea is actually not where the original owners, the very first owners of Doodles, they did not buy it on OpenSea because they weren't minted yet. Every single popular NFT project always has a minting page. And for Doodles, that's doodles.app. So this is where the first 10,000 Doodles were created. They were minted here. And then after they were minted, they would show up on OpenSea. And so what we're going to do through Mintables is we're also going to try to create something like this, where you buy, where your fans could buy the initial set of your NFTs, the first 10,000 or 5,000 or 200 NFTs that you want to create. So if I go back, so now I'm back to my project here. Um, instead of clicking on generate images, I'll click deployment. So right now, Mintables currently supports three deployment blockchains. Right now, it's just Rinkby, Polygon, and Ethereum. 
and we're trying to add Solana. So right now for Polygon, uh, you can see that it's much cheaper to deploy to Polygon than Ethereum. That's because of gas fees. It's it, If you look at, let's take a look actually at this Doodle uh, smart contract. If I take a look here, this was when the smart contract was created. And you could see that it cost, actually it cost $3,800 worth of Ether to deploy it at that time. So the price of Ethereum has dropped a little bit, but it is extremely expensive to deploy to Ethereum these days. For Polygon, it's much cheaper. So for us, we'll, we'll be deploying the Polygon today. And I'll call this, I'll call, I have to give this kind of a, a, a minting page URL. And this is the URL that my minting page will live at. I'll keep it Dino Bros. So let me just explain what the name and the symbol is. If I look, every single NFT contract has a name and a symbol. And that shows up right here. The doodles, this, this first part right here, that's the name. And the second part is the symbol. So for me, I'll have my name be Dino Bros. My symbol will be Dino. I'll have the collection be 10,000. And I need to set a minting price. So for now, let's just do it at 0 0.03. And that's for in Polygon, this is 0 0.03 Matic, which is the Polygon currency. And that's equal to about as six cents. So for you, maybe you want to set this a bit higher, uh, but I'll, I'll set it to be pretty low. I'll actually set it to be that 12 cents. Okay, so now we're ready to go, and I will go ahead and create contracts. So this is where it takes you to, and this is going to take a little bit of time to finish, um, and it's because it's actually creating your smart contract on the Polygon blockchain, and everything done on the blockchain takes a little bit of time. So I can click here to kind of monitor the status, and you can see it hasn't actually showed up on Polyscan yet. So let's come back here in 10 minutes or so, and I'll show you what this page will look like once the contract is created. Okay, cool. So it's been about five minutes. Um, you can see that my, if I scroll down, my contract has been deployed. So if I click here, this is the contract address. You can see here's the name and here's the symbol. And that's what we had put in on the, uh, earlier when we were creating our contract. So that's great. The balance of the contract is zero. What, that means that nobody has actually bought anything yet, which makes sense. I, I just deployed it. Um, the price is 0 0.06 Matic, and uh, it sold zero out of 10,000. And then here I can airdrop NFTs to people, um, but we'll, we'll skip that for now. And this is this will show you kind of what, as people start minting your collection, they'll start showing up in this list here. So let's take a look at the minting page that gets created. So if I come here and click on this, this is the minting page that gets automatically created for your collection. And if every time I refresh this, kind of a different preview of a NFT will show up. If I come here, this is, this is the link that you'd want to share with people. So, you know, your fans can come here, they can start minting your collection, and this minting page will be a little bit different than other minting pages that you might have seen out there. So most of the other ones you see, you probably just click a button, it says mint, and you get randomly created an NFT. And that's great, we're gonna, we're gonna build that in the future, but we actually built this first just because I think it's, it's actually more fun and it's more engaging, um, and it allows more uh, choice from your fans to kind of create their own NFT from your collection. So in this example, um, I get to pick my own background. I'll pick my own body, boots, Eyes. And I'm picking this as uh, the second option, right, in every single one of these uh, attributes, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second. So here's the NFT that I've created. And then I can actually name my NFT. So in the Doodles collection, they're all, they're all kind of just named uh, a number between 1 and 10,000. So this is Doodle number 2645. But as part of this minting process, I can actually give this a name. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it Chris. That's my name. And I will mint it. And you can see this is where uh, I have to pay. So uh, the price, like we said before, was 0 0.06. And I will actually confirm that. So I just purchased one from myself, right? Uh, you'd obviously want other people to purchase them. Um, but here, this is where, this is kind of the pending page. And remember, what's happening here is that 
there is some data being written to the blockchain. So it's going to take like five minutes for this mint to finish. If you've minted other NFTs in the past, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But it takes a little bit of time for that transaction to actually be saved to the blockchain. Okay, so after like two minutes, uh, this NFT is now officially minted to the blockchain. And so because it's on the blockchain and because it's minted, it's on the Polygon blockchain, any marketplace that can look at the Polygon blockchain and works with the Poly blog Polygon blockchain um, will be able to have this. So OpenSea does. OpenSea is compatible with Polygon. And that's why if I click on this, you'll see that my NFT now shows up on, uh, on OpenSea. And it has all the same, it has all the properties, so they all carried over. And you can see here's the contract that we were looking at earlier. But now the difference is this contract actually has uh, currency in it. It has my currency, right? Because I, I purchased it from myself, but this contract now has this currency in it. And I could see that OpenSea has kind of integrated uh, with, with my smart contract. So only one thing from my collection has been purchased and that's why it's been minted and that's why it shows up here. I wanted to, one of the cool things with, uh, with blockchains is like I said, they're interoperable by, by default, which is, this is how all these marketplaces work is that they just look at the information on the blockchain and let you transact them. So here's a cool cat NFT. This has nothing to do with mintables at all, but because it's on the blockchain, we can actually show cool cats NFTs. So I put in the Cool Cats contract, which I can get from here, right? Uh, this is their contract address. So here's their contract address. I could put that into Mintables. And, I, you know, in this example, this is Cool Cat number five, 8515. So if I come here and I change that to 8515, that's this guy, right? And that, that, that also shows up on Mintables, just like it shows up on OpenSea. That's, this is kind of how it all works. Uh, under the hood and so now uh now that i've purchased one one nft from my from my own collection i can come back to my deployment page and if i refresh the page you'll see the balance is now 0 0.06 and here's my recently minted nft i can click on that to take a look at it so here it is and this this is my balance and so if i click withdraw here this will actually withdraw it to my uh, Polygon wallet. Come over here, click on this. So let's see, which one was, okay. So this is my wallet right here. And you can see it has 12.8 uh, Matic right now. And, I, and, and here, this was the minting thing. So I just, I, I, I'm down uh, 0.06 Matic because I just purchased one. But if I click withdraw here, it'll ask me to, so here's the thing, I'm the owner of this, smart contract. So I'm the only person who could withdraw from it. When I created that smart contract through Mintables, it automatically made my wallet the owner of that smart contract. So rest assured that nobody can just come here and click withdraw. First of all, they won't even be able to see this page. Okay. Only you own this project. So only you can see this page. But second of all, only your wallet address can withdraw from it. And so that's what's happening here is I'm confirming that this is my wallet address and I want to withdraw from it. So if I click confirm, Again, this will take another couple seconds because it's performing an operation on the blockchain. Keep in mind that everything you do against the blockchain will require gas fees. So when I withdraw, it's actually gonna take a tiny bit of funds just to perform that operation. That's how blockchains work, is you have to pay for everything you do on there. But if I come back here, you can see that my account balance just went up a little bit, right? It used to be, and if I refresh this page, the balance in the contract just went back to zero because I withdrew from the contract and, and put it into my own wallet. So that's kind of how Mintables works. And we have a lot of other tools here, right? So you can, so you can change the price if you wanted to. If your NFTs started selling out way too quickly, you can raise the price here to whatever you want. But keep in mind, every single time you change it, you have to do something to the blockchain, which means you have to pay a little bit in gas fees. You know, but if you're really selling out hot, then this might be a good idea. So maybe I want to change the price here and I can update it. And you'll see that when I try to update it, it's estimating that it's going to cost me about this much Matic just to be able to change that value on. The but so I, I won't do that for now. This link is the one that I would want to share. And people can start minting from this page.
Okay, so now let's talk about uniqueness because, you know, NFTs don't technically have to be unique, but one of the things that makes them special is that they're unique, right? It wouldn't make a lot of sense for these types of NFTs if they, if they were two of the exact same type. So what happens if somebody tries to mint something that's already been minted? So let's pretend I'm somebody else now and I'm coming here and I'm trying to mint the exact same NFT that was just minted. So if you remember last time, we had picked the second option, second option of every single attribute. If I pick the second option of all of them, and you'll see that it recognizes, uh, Mintables recognizes that this has already been minted and you have to try to buy it on OpenSea. Because OpenSea is a resale market. So this is kind of where you can make bids on existing minted NFTs. And so the last thing to say, <laughs> is that Mintables does not take any cut from your NFT sales. So if you remember, we had set the price to be 0.06. And after I minted my first NFT, exactly 0.06 showed up in my contract. And then I withdrew it into my wallet and I, I kind of took all of it out. A lot of other tools out there take some cut from all of your NFT sales. Mintables does not do that. So I hope this was helpful. Um, and you know, if you have any more questions, we are on Twitter uh, and you can find us on Twitter and uh, yeah.